Are you aware that your parents have two of the same picture of your sister? <laughs> Where? That one up there. Yeah. And then down here on the left of the computer. <laughs> I, dude, we should have thought this out. We could have like replaced all their pictures with stuff. Always oh, still can. <laughs> still can. This is the Always More Podcast. Hello and hello. It is April 28th and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there is always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversation, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we're talking about our reviews and recommendations of the week, 40-year-old superheroes, Chipotle, JFK versus zombies, and so much more. But first, welcome how are you, my friend? Dude, I'm doing good. But first, okay, look, look, look. We, 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 I feel by the time this episode comes out, it's going to be a little late, but I don't care. We got to talk about this. I don't care. It's not even going to be my news of the week, but we have to talk about it. Is there was a Josh war. Oh, yeah. The Josh <laughs> fight. Oh, my God. What was okay. that, Nebraska? <laughs> okay, let's talk about this for a second, okay? First off. First off, okay, you know how like the whole Area 51 thing came out and like, oh yeah, we're gonna go raid Area 51. Like three people yeah, showed no, up. Yeah, no, this Josh fight is what that should have been. <laughs> there were so many people there, and all of them were Josh. Okay, so for you guys that don't know the story, basically what happened was, uh, you had um, you had a random dude named Josh, of course, and he goes on Facebook Messenger and he like collects all the Joshes that he could find on Facebook, which was a lot of them. It was a lot. And he basically puts in these coordinates like, all right, guys, this is the day we're going to fight to whoever can keep the name. That's basically what it was. <laughs> like every Josh <laughs> in the world was invited to fight for their right to be Josh. And only one person was going to get to keep the name. So I guess everybody else had to change their names after the fight. Yeah. So what happened was this past weekend, uh, all the Joshes, or not a lot, not all of them, obviously, but a lot, like a few hundred. Like it was, it was a, it was a good number of people. It was a good, it was a good group. Yeah. And they all show up. And of course it's just like noodles and stuff. Like there's no, no real violence. Um, but they all come up and they start fighting and everything. And guess who ends up winning? Um, Josh. Yes. <laughs> But it was this little boy's name, and his name was Josh, and this little boy won. I don't know yeah, if, he's like, like, four or five years old. Yeah. They I'm, call him Little Josh. I'm sure they took it easy on him, but this boy won, and it was this Oh, they had thing. to have taken it easy on him. <laughs> he would have gotten trounced if it were a Chris fight. <laughs> we have no cares. Could you have— I would have <laughs> drop-kicked the little kid. I don't even care. <laughs> could you imagine if it was, like, a Zach fight or a— uh, Oh, what's the other one? What's the— Oh, um, oh, what's the other name? What's the, what's the monster— um, Oh, what am I thinking of? Not Kevin. What is it? No, Kevin. Kevin is a good one. Uh, no, no, no. Mike. No. Ah. I, I, I can't don't know. Play. Okay, whatever. Anyways, but yes. So that was Karen fun. fight. Karen. Oh, a Karen fight would have gotten brutal. I feel like no one would actually fight. They would just argue at one another. Lots of manager calling. A I lot think. of manager. Yeah. <laughs> Who's who organized this event? I need. Can I talk I to your manager? I need to talk to the manager. <laughs> Nah, for sure. Oh man. Okay. That's, sorry. I'm sorry. I know no, no, we, we kind of went off of there, one. but <laughs> so our recommendations and reviews for the week. Let's get back on track here. Our wreck and rev. All what right. do you got for me, Tim? Okay. So I have a uh, a twofer uh, for you here, and it's basically kind of one of the same. I have two documentaries that I watched this past week. Um, one is called Maradona, which is by the Argentinian soccer player Diego Maradona. Right. Uh, and if you got if you don't know who he is. Um, He's exactly that. Just a legendary football player. Uh, he played in like the 70s, I think, in the 80s. Uh, he played for Napoli. That was his biggest team, but he played for Argentina as well. And then another documentary I watched was Pele. And so uh, the guy is a Brazilian dude. He played in the 50s and 60s. Uh, and so I was, I don't know why I was in the mood to watch documentaries about soccer players, but I was. And so I, uh, I enjoyed both of them. Maradona had a little bit more drama. And I mean, Maradona was As kind you of, would expect. Right. He was, if you don't know who Maradona is, um, You're wrong. <laughs> You're living life wrong. <laughs> he he's he's full of controversy. I'll say it like that. And so, uh, but I enjoy both of them. They're both really great. Cool. What about you, man? Uh, so for mine for the week, I watched this movie called Thunder Force on Netflix okay. with um, Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy. It's about forty year old women oh. that met up after high school and. They're living in a world where superpowered people are pretty much all villains. Yeah. So they find a way to fight back and they give themselves superpowers rather than being born with them or radioactive stuff. It's a comedy. It's an action movie. It's a comic book movie. It's such a great, great experience to watch. <laughs> It's on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. Both of those women are absolute queens in my book. They can do no wrong. Got it. And I would suggest that movie highly. 
Um, my second rev, uh, rec and rev for the week is actually an album, not a movie. Oh, I know what you're going for. Preacher's Kid. Yes. So I follow yes. a creator on TikTok, um, and the the album that they put out is just so phenomenal. It's so it's, good. It topped the Christian charts. Yes. It is an explicit album. Yep. It has language. It has yep. queer content. It has all kinds of different things that you would not expect from a Christian album. Yeah. But it's the true Christian kid experience. Right. That like 90% of us have yep. had or are going through now, like deconstructing your faith, uh, being taught things that don't really make sense, that type of stuff. It's not bashing Christianity right. by any means because they still are Christian. Yeah. Uh, the creator similar is still a Christian, um, but they use their experience in a way to write this album. Yeah. It just, it really spoke to me and I really appreciate it. It's such a great musical album. Well, for anyone out there who is like the kind of typical K love listener and n- nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you want to kind of get yourself into the experience of what it's like for the other side of all this, this is a great album. It, you know, it, like you said, she's still a Christian. She, uh, she loves God, but this album really does just share her experience in growing up to the church and what it was like in, if I'm not mistaken, LGBTQ. And, yeah, absolutely. um, and so it, it's a really enlightening. And even from our perspective, just growing up in the same time that she did. And so we kind of see some of the similar things that the church did that is definitely yep. wrong. And so, um, yeah, definitely, definitely a good one. I listened to it, I think, last week, and I really enjoyed the whole thing. I pre-saved it on Spotify when they announced that they were releasing it, and I loved it. It's really um, good. Moving on from that one, though, definitely give that one a check out. Yep. All right, so segment number two, uh, brand, uh, it's not a brand new one. It's one of our favorites, though. It's, uh, For sure. <laughs> it's a segment titled, I don't know who needed to hear this, but... Cheap is not a virtue when getting a tattoo. No. You get no. what you pay for, man. You get what you pay for. Anytime somebody's <laughs> like, oh, I just got this tattoo. It only cost me like $100. I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> if you want, I know a guy that can fix it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cheap is not a, a virtue for tattoos. Yeah. That's, that's, that, good. that's not a selling point for me. Right, right. For all you youngins out there who are like, oh, I'm going to go find a good tattoo that's worth my money. Be careful. Be, you, you get what you pay for Make for sure. Make sure you find a good, reputable artist that is going to be clean and take care of you and is not just going to do whatever you ask him to do just because you ask him to do it. Yep. Find an artist. Yeah, that's an it. artist. Yeah, all right. And then pay for your art. And pay for it. And tip. Tip well. Please tip well. Please tip Always well. tip your artist. <laughs> all right. Uh, mine is, um, I don't know who needed to hear this, but if you want double of anything at Chipotle or anywhere else for that matter, uh, wait until after the employee already puts the first scoop. So that way he's not compromised thinking like, okay, if you tell him beforehand, he might go halvesy on the first scoop. But if he already has that first scoop and whatever it is, and you ask for the second, you know you're going to get at least a little bit more. So I feel like there's two ways to react to a customer asking that. Like if I'm the scooper. (laughs) So the first way obviously is like you said, you know, they ask for more. I give you a little bit less than I usually would, but I don't really care about the corporate pocketbook that much. (laughs) So if you tell me you're asking for double, I'm probably going to scoop like three scoops worth for you. Yeah. If you're asking me just like one at a time, I'm going to get a little annoyed and be like, all right, fine. (laughs) One scoop. Right. You know what? Now you're getting less on your rice. Well, you, you now you're be- getting less beans. <laughs> you want guac? You're only getting a, a single little a speck. Single sl- <laughs> and it's extra. Well, you can kind of you can usually kind of tell when you go up into the line, like, what kind of server you have. And kind of like, oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. You, you can kind of like, all right, well, it, it's a safer way to kind of get your, make sure you get that extra scoop for sure, though, I think. I, I'll try it out next time. <laughs> next time I'm at a Chipotle or something like that, Freebirds, I'll, I'll try it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our our next topic, we're just blowing through these pretty quickly. Yeah, dude, that's really good. We're like, I'm, we're jazzed like up or I something. Like it. Yeah, maybe it's the energy drinks. Maybe Probably. it's maybe it's the pre workout. Who knows? Maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to our next topic though is what did I miss? God, I love that sound. Yes. All right. <laughs> So what do you got for me, Tim? This is a part of the show where we like to present to you some news of the week that you probably didn't hear about. What is your story? Yes. Okay. Here's the headline. A 71-year-old Floridian survived a flying turtle that crashed through her windshield on the freeway. I'm, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> a flying turtle? A flying turtle. 
<laughs> okay, so here's what happened. This woman is just a 71 year old woman, just you know, driving down the highway, doing her thing, you know, minding her own business, minding as you her do. own business, yeah. And all of a sudden, her windshield crashes in. She gets, of course, she pulls over, and you know, she's actually it makes her bleed a little bit. But to come out, it's not a rock, it's not a random tire, it's not something that was just left on the road. No, it was a turtle. Turtle. They have pictures of it. I like turtles. It's not like she made up this. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> it's not like she made up this random story. It was a turtle. It was there in the windshield. And so the cops come by and they're like trying to figure it out. And they assume that someone in the car in front of her had, had no, this is horrible, but had the turtle and threw it up and oh, it landed on the car behind them. Oh, no. That's what they're assuming happened. What is this, Mario Kart? <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> You just, you, you beat me to it, but basically there were so many jokes I saw online about it because like, oh man, you better watch out. I expect an Italian plumber, one that's a culprit behind all this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she was okay. She had a few minor injuries. How was the turtle? That's the one I really care about. The turtle survived and he was perfectly oh, thank God. fine. Oh, thank God. He, he had, yeah, that's the, that's the crazy part about the story is that, I mean. <laughs> the, the whole second, thing, <laughs> really. The even crazier part about it is that the turtle was perfectly fine. Just a few scratches on the shell and they I'm put sure him back in the grass. I'm sure some PTSD. Well, it's true. You're probably terrified. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe his story. He's going to go back to the pond and try to tell all his little turtle friends and think like, yeah, right, Jerome. You will not believe what happened to me today. <laughs> no, Jerome, we don't believe. Last week, you said you were abducted by aliens. The week before that, you told me you met a giraffe. What's it going to be this week, Jerome? It's like, no, this really happened. I went, Whatever. I went flying. <laughs> Turtles don't fly, Jerome. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. That's what I got, man. What do you have? All right. So there was a house in California yep. that called the police because at two in the morning, they heard a break in. So this woman rushes to her child's room, as you do, mm -hmm. grabs her child, brings her back to her bedroom, and they're hiding in the closet, cowering, fearing for their lives for yep. this break in at 2 a.m. in California, which, as you know, California is not a stand your ground state. So mm -hmm. she either has to hide or run. Yep. She can't defend her own home. Legally speaking, anyway. The police get there, kick in the door, and all of a sudden, this woman hears laughter. She hears chuckling, laughter. The police let her know, hey, it's the police. Come on out. You're fine. She called the cops on her own Roomba vacuum. <laughs> so apparently her son had set the settings because he didn't want to do his chores or whatever have you. But he set for like two or three in the morning, oh not in the afternoon. Gosh. So the vacuum is going off and she freaked out, had no idea what was happening. She just heard bumping in in the house. Did it break something? It like, I don't know if it broke something, but she, she just describes hearing bumping noises and it sounded <laughs> like somebody was like rummaging through her house. Yeah. It's just her vacuum. <laughs> just a robot vacuum. I'm telling you, man, robots breaking into people's houses. That is not how I thought that was going to go. No, no. <laughs> I, I foresaw that, you know, like Skynet, Terminator type right. thing. I did not see it being the, the Roomba vacuum. <laughs> but you know what? If, if there was like, okay, let's say there was a smart computer out there created, like a smart AI, and they were to try to like start some kind of thing. I mean, that's the way to start. With the Roombas. Right. The stuff that we they're, already they're, have. They're, they're everywhere. Yeah. That's I mean, why I don't have one. I mean, the, I mean, <laughs> have you seen have you seen those people out there who like put like knives and stuff on their Roombas yeah. and stuff like have that? Have you seen the one where it's like a claymore mine? <laughs> right. It's like this side towards enemy, and it's just like <laughs> roaming around like Russian roulette, but way more deadly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then, I mean, you have the cameras in the house already. You got Alexa in the house, and mm -hmm. you got. I mean, come on, man. It's it's too but easy. We work for a smart home company, so right. we know how dangerous this stuff can be. <laughs> You got to watch out for those Roombas, man. I'm telling you. Oh, man. That was fun. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess that's pretty much it for our first segments. That's uh, it, bro. We'll go ahead and head off to break. I think we actually have a sponsor this time. I think we might. We might. Two bros with a sponsor. Let's do it. <laughs> they might go to commercial. All right. We'll see you guys in just a second. And we're back. We are back. Back, back, back. Hey, guys, in case you didn't uh, know this, uh, Chris and I are experimenting a little bit. And so if you like YouTube, if you, you're you on YouTube at all, I know a lot of the Gen Zer guys are on there, but uh, in case you want to see us, we are trying this out. So we're recording. Uh, if something happens and, uh, you know, it goes crazy and we're not able to do it, then I apologize. I'm probably just edit this out anyways, but. I make no apologies. 
Well, I never apologize for anything. <laughs> you know that. Yes, yes. Well, anyways. All right, guys. So we're trying new things out. So if you like it, let us know. If not, then we'll just scrap the whole thing. But either way, we we might go onto social media and start putting things on a certain popular uh, popular social media platform out there called the Tickety Talk. And so, I, don't, I don't think that's the name of it. Uh, something like that. God, you're old. <laughs> All right, guys. Main topic for today. Last week we had a good, or two weeks ago we had a fun episode, and we wanted to continue the fun and talk about one of, I know, Chris's favorite topics, and that is zombies. zombies. Yeah. So zombies, like literally one of my favorite things to talk. <laughs> you know, the, actually on TikTok, there's a video. It's like you get kidnapped, and two hours later they return you because you won't stop talking about, for me, it's zombies. <laughs> I could literally talk you about zombies be. all freaking day. <laughs> Like, I've got plans and contingencies depending on what type of zombie it is, yeah. where the spread starts. The only way I don't foresee myself surviving a zombie apocalypse is if I am patient zero. Mm. Outside of that, game. Yeah, you're pretty, you're pretty set, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've had this conversation for many moons since, oh, yeah. since before. I've prepared myself psychologically to end any person I've ever loved if they get bit. Especially you. <laughs> I've thought about it. Yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. Yeah, let's do it. What is a zombie? Zombie, so zombie, zombie, zombie? I looked this up in Miriam's Miriam Webster's dictionary. How professional of you. I know, right? <laughs> um, a zombie is a willless and speechless human, as in voodoo belief and in fictional stories, held to have died and been supernaturally reanimated. It is also a person held to resemble the so-called walking dead, Yep. It is also a mixed drink made of several kinds of rum, liquor, and fruit juice. Mm, Delicious, nice. by the way. Yeah? Yeah, they sell them at, um, oh man, what is it, Trader Sam's at Disney? I don't know if you remember that one. I got the zombie head mug oh, when we went. Oh, you did. Same man. drink. Yeah, oh. same drink. I still have that mug, too. Oh, cool. I should have brought it for the video. No. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. All right, well, hey, let's, uh, let's take for a second because, I mean, you know me. I like history, and so I wanted to dive in a little bit into the zombie history, just a just little bit. <laughs> uh, so I found an article, and again, we'll put all the stuff in the show notes, uh, but here's a little history about zombies. Zombie folklore has been around in Haiti possibly since the 17th century when West African slaves were brought in to work on sugarcane plantations. Brutal conditions left the slaves longing for freedom. Zombie stories are said to represent slavery. Voodoo zombies are where our modern zombie zombie evolved from. Voodoo is a religion based in West Africa and practiced throughout Haiti and the Caribbean. Which, how do you say Caribbean? Do you say Caribbean? I've heard, like, there's different ways to say it. Caribbean. Caribbean. I say Caribbean. You say Caribbean. Unless I'm saying Pirates of the Caribbean. Right. <laughs> but outside of that, it's Caribbean. I keep going back and forth because of that movie. Yeah. I can't tell if it's they right They ruined it for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Anyways. Um, with what people now uh, nowadays call witch doctor, uh, which is a racist term, uh, called b bokers? Bokor. Bokor, thank you. Uh, bokors. Bokors sometimes use herbs, uh, shells fit herbs, shells fit uh, shells, fish, animal parts, bones, and other objects to create different concoctions, including zombie powders, which contain, I can't read. Tetrodotoxin. Oh, thank you. I couldn't read from here. <laughs> uh, a deadly neurotoxin found in Puffer fish. Oh, fun. Um, <laughs> use carefully the uh, pterodox... Ter okay, I got to move Tetrodox. Thank you. Pterodoxin. Combination may cause zombie-like symptoms such as difficulty walking, mental confusion, and respiratory problems. High doses can lead to paralysis and coma. This could cause someone to appear dead and be buried alive, then later revive to do the Bacor's bidding for whoever paid the Bacor. Yeah. So... My dad actually told me some stories about our family history. Um, oh. We have documented zombie hunters in my family. What? Yeah, so it was like a distant relative, like my great-great-grandfather's brother or something like that, uh, was paid by their township to hunt people that were believed to be zombies. No way. Yeah. I don't understand how it worked. I don't know how much he made <laughs> doing it. I don't know if it was like a career or a side gig. <laughs> It's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a sugar cane plantation runner, but as a side hustle, I hunt zombies in my spare time. I just want to imagine, like, they have, like, a hotline, like, a, just a phone just for th that. It just and, rings, like... And, you know, like they're, they're islanders, too, so it would have been, ring, yeah, man. Okay, I'll go kill the zombie for you. Like, that's exactly how I, yeah. like, I picture my grandfather that's cool. just younger doing this. And it's just a fun story. I don't know if it's true or not. It's probably not, but you know, it's one of those stories my dad told me. 
and I love it. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it runs in your blood. It does. <laughs> it runs in your blood. Um, speaking of running in the blood, though, um, there is another... <laughs> That was a bad transition, that was right? Horrible, but great. So there is another way that you can be a zombie. Yeah. It is actually a mental disorder, a psychiatric disorder called Cotard syndrome or walking corpse syndrome that people have that makes them think they are dead. Mm. Their flesh is rotting or their homes are rotting, whatever have you. Yeah. Um, basically everything that they touch or in, are involved with is decomposing around them. Yeah. They think they are dead, so a lot of times they will try to kill themselves just to end the mm. suffering that they have. Yeah, But it's a psychiatric disorder that is very treatable. Right, uh, You just need to get help for that. Yeah, uh, So there's definitely more than one type of zombie. Um, as you said, there was the voodoo zombies brought back by the Bacors. Um, there is what we know as modern zombies with the viruses right. and the cordyceps and all kinds of different things like that. Um all of that just kind of spreads into the modern media zombie, yeah. though. And there's so many things like that. I mean, like, even, uh, you know, you look about aliens, you look at, um, what's another big one? You know, vampires, stuff like that. They all have, like, this folklore of where they kind of came from. And there's there's modern transition or translations of what they mean now. And so zombies are definitely one of those. It's been around for a while. I think probably the, the <laughs> biggest uh, the biggest push for zombies, I guess, started with movies, though, right? I would imagine so. So, yeah. like, 1932, I think, was the first zombie film, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, White Zombie. White Zombie. It came out at the same time as, like, Frankenstein and Dracula and all the monster movies. But it didn't really catch on as a big thing until George A. Romero. Probably, tell, tell me more. <laughs> probably the greatest <laughs> zombie movie director of all time. He's the one that did Night of the Living Dead, Day mm. of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, all kinds of really crazy stuff. Um, his movies, like, over, I think he did, like, a 15-year career. Um, all of his movies were, they they evolved. Yeah. Like, starting with Night of the Living Dead, obviously, was the first George A. Romero movie. Um, that one was just, like, zombies... Just people in makeup, basically. Yeah, yeah. But as time goes on, obviously technology gets better, right. CGI gets better, um, the makeup departments get better. Yeah. So as time goes on, you can really see how his movies start shaping what we know as modern zombie culture today. Yeah. So shows like The Walking Dead, where you can literally see like through the ribs of the mm. zombies, are because of the contributions that old school zombie movies like Night of the Living Dead started with. Yeah, yeah. It kind of pushed that. You know, this is an important thing to invest in. So they started doing all right. kinds of stuff like that. Man. Um, taking everything from like, like I said, from Night of the Living Dead all the way up to, I guess, the most recent one would be Zombieland 2 as like the mm. biggest one. I guess so. Yeah. Like uh, if you're counting bigger ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like big main mainstream. Because, I mean, obviously there's like Train to Busan and foreign films, Alive, which is on Netflix. That's a pretty cool movie, by the way. It's all over my head, man. <laughs> Trust me, man. Like You're say, the expert here. I could talk for hours <laughs> on this one. We need to watch a live together, though. Okay. Like one of these days when the kids are asleep because it is not a childhood movie. <laughs> uh, we need to watch that movie. It's pretty great. All right, I'm down. Um, anyways, so speaking of big movies, though, let's do a top five. Let's do it, man. We did it uh, two weeks ago for most movies. We're going to do this one specifically for zombie movies. Though. Yes. So uh, in the notes, I wrote it backwards because I couldn't figure out how to do the bullet points so, from five to one. So it's actually one to five on our notes. No, no, no. The like number one is number five. Like on our notes, number one is number five on. So start with number one and go to number, number five. We'll go down. But it's actually number five or number one. Yes. So number five. <laughs> I'm just making it more difficult Land. than it has to be. That's all. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> number five on the top ten. Uh, this is all according to Screen Rant, by the way, which is a great publication if you want to. Yeah. Rate things, I guess. <laughs> uh, number five would be Zombieland. It's a classic. Wait, this was on your one of your, in your yeah, top ten. It was last in my week. top ten, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, like two of the movies that are in my top ten are on these lists. And actually, my number, I think it was number two, uh, is number one on this yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so number four, 28 Days Later. Dude, I remember watching this movie when I was in, must have been like rather late middle school or early high school. And I knew that my parents wouldn't want me to watch it. But, oh, for sure. But I, I'm pretty sure I downloaded it illegally from LimeWire. And <laughs> LimeWire was legal. It was file sharing. <laughs> sure. And 
and I remember watching that movie, and I remember just being so, I don't know what's the, the emotion I'm looking for here, but it was just, it, I wasn't, it was almost like I was scared. Like, Perturbed. It was like, yes. I was like, like, shoot, could this actually happen? Like, <laughs> It really could. That's the scary thing. Like, it, Some of these movies, they show you like the science behind it, and right. obviously it's pseudoscience. But yeah, is it though? <laughs> like, but is it, though? it could happen. You never really know. Like that's the worrisome thing. Yeah, it's like we look at COVID, and everybody's like, "Oh, well, you know, if there was a zombie thing, obviously we'd get it under control quickly." Uh, but <laughs> we had that chance with COVID, and we definitely did not get it right. under control quickly. Yeah. So imagine if it's a zombie virus, you know, it, it could have really bad repercussions. Yeah. That movie definitely kind of showed like, and who, who was it? Uh, Cillian Murphy? Is that his, how you say Killian. it? Killian. Killian. Killian Murphy. Uh, he was, uh, he was the main protagonist in the movie. Great job. Great, great performance. It was a great movie. Oh yeah. Uh, you want me to go next? Number, yeah, yeah, number yeah. one, two, no, five, four, three. Number three is Train to Busan. Train to Busan. Train to Busan. I've like never I said, seen this. So this one's a Korean film, and it is such a great movie. Obviously, it's um, in Korean, so you have to read the subtitles, which I know a God lot forbid. of people. A lot of people have problems with that. <laughs> I love foreign films, though. Like, yeah. Especially movies like this, where it's like a it's a concept that's been thought of, but not in that way. Mm. So this movie happens pretty much all on a train. There's a zombie apocalypse. These people are trying to get out of the most populated areas so that yeah. they can be safer, hmm. but there's zombies on the train. So they have to fight the zombies on the train. The train stops. They have to fight the zombies trying to get onto the oh train. Oh, my gosh. Um, the zombies, uh, with this one and the last two as well, the zombies are, like, fast, which is my Ooh, nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fast, like, thinking zombies. Yeah. So they have to, like, make sure the zombies don't see them. They, like, plaster mm. out windows. It, it's a really crazy adventure. you got to check that one yeah, out. Yeah, I'm down. For sure. Probably one of the best films of all time, in my opinion. Wow. I would put it in my top 50 for sure. Top 50. Cool. Uh, all right, next one, number two, One Cut of the Dead. So One Cut of the Dead is, like, a found film version of a zombie apocalypse. So, like, uh, kind of in the Cloverfield type oh, mentality oh, where like a, they uh, have somebody has like a camera and they're recording it's not the, a mockumentary what's the word i'm looking for is it a mockumentary i i wouldn't know maybe mockumentary like i said I mean, found, that's what the office I, is i call it a found film so okay. that's basically the survivors of this initial mm. event have a camera yeah and you just get to watch their panic and one by one they're getting picked off and yeah. they're dying and it's it's an insane movie. Like the <laughs> ending was just like, oh my god! How old is this movie? Ah, uh, this one it's not super old. I didn't put a date on it. I don't recall, but I, I want to say it was like twenty eighteen. Oh, okay, twenty sixteen. Maybe. I might check that one out then. Yeah, that one's definitely on my list as well. Um, I I would put that one up there for sure. But the ending will get you. It. Mm. Oh man! All it, right, it's Cloverfield all over again. You sold me. I like Cloverfield, so you sold me. All right, number one, man, give it to us. Number one, like I said. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Big surprise. Top three, Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead. I think this one is such a great movie because it is a zombie comedy. It's a zombie. Yes. A, a zomb zombie? Zombie? Zombie. I, I will call it a zombie. <laughs> I like it. Um, it takes all the tropes of, you know, the classic Night of the Living Dead and yeah. Dawn of the Dead, obviously, where it pulls its name from. Shaun of the Dead, Dawn of the Dead, you yep. know. Um, the zombies are the slow, dumb zombies, but they overpower you because there's so many of them mm -hmm. and they just sneak up on you. Um, the whole movie is just based on this guy trying to save his friends and his family and his stepdad, who he hates, uh, get back to the bar, have a pint, and just wait until the whole thing blows over. Right. But obviously, hilarity ensues and everything <laughs> goes wrong. Yeah. Such a great movie by Edgar Wright. I trust anything that man does. It's a classic. It's a good one. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember really loving it. We should watch that one, too. We should do, like, a zombie day. A zombie day? A zombie day. Zom day. Zom day. I'm down. Let's, Let's do, it. do it. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, honorable mentions for these movies, yeah. though, just because, you know, we've got the time. Uh, 28 Days Later, obviously, was on the list. 28 Weeks Later, great follow-up to oh, that Oh, yeah. One. I forgot about that. That was good, too. They man. weren't, like, directly connected. You don't need to watch one to watch the other, but... Really good movie. Yeah. Um, I Am Legend, Will Smith delivered a fantastic yeah. performance. I think technically, though, those are zombie, or not zombies, uh, vampires. They're like cancer vampires. Oh, that's a good point. I didn't even think about they that. They acted like zombies, but they were more like cancer vampires. 
oh. well, the way the story was written. It doesn't matter. It was still a great film. Huh. Uh, World War Z, which... This is one of my favorite ones. Now, I, now, I know I, it is. I, no, I know you don't like it as much because it differs so much from the book. Yeah, it was a great film. All I wanted for them to do was give it a different title. Uh, if they had just named it anything else, I'd be uh, fine yeah. with it. See, I, I, I mean, I liked it as a film just because, one, I didn't read the book, so I didn't have that knowledge of ruining, ruining it for me. But number two, uh, I really enjoyed the soundtrack to it. Uh, soundtrack was great. Because uh, I, I believe it had This Will Destroy You. It had... Yep. Um, oh, I can't remember what else it was, but just the whole, I mean, Brad Pitt is phenomenal. I like him in there. So that's personally one of my favorite zombie movies. No, it was a great movie. Like I said, I just prefer they would have named it anything different because that's like buying a Harry Potter book and then you open it up and the first line is Percy Jackson was a son of, <laughs> you know, it, it's not, it yeah. wasn't anything like the book. Like yeah. some people say things are different. It was literally not even the same story. The zombies yeah, weren't the same. Uh, the cures. It, it, mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, we we'll can move, move on. on. Move on. Move on. Uh, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies was just a fun take <laughs> on a, a classic. Stupid, hilarious movie. Oh my god, that was so great. <laughs> so Jessica's like all into Pride and Prejudice and all of that stuff, and so we went to go watch this, and it's so bad, but it's just it's, it's just so, hilarious. It's such an awful movie, but it was so fun. It was a fun take. Yep. Um. Oh, so man. those will be like the honorable mentions. <laughs> yes. So zombies made a huge splash in books, too, like I mentioned earlier, uh, with my personal favorite being Max Brooks's Zombie Survival Guide, uh, which is basically like a Boy Scout field survival guide to zombies. I feel like it's something everyone needs in their house. You definitely do. Um, but it, <laughs> it tells you, you know, how to find resources, how to survive in the woods, how to best combat a zombie, how to best combat multiple zombies. Mm. Um, it gives you a couple of stories of survivors of this event as though it actually has happened. Um, it goes into a little bit of the the pseudo history of zombies, you know, yeah. uh, reports that obviously in our real life, a lot of people don't believe, but they're well written reports. Mm. So, you know, it could be what it is. It's Take it, it is what fiction. you will. <laughs> uh, but if the zombies happen and they are the slow, dumb zombies like the survival guide suggests, I would say that will probably be your best bet. Yeah. Um, follow up to that one. World War Z, probably one of my favorite books of all time. It's such hmm. a phenomenally written book. It was a guy going around uh, interviewing survivors from the actual oh, zombie apocalypse, yeah. uh, which is why, like I said, it was nothing like the movie right, right. at all. Um, but he just goes, talks to different people all across the world, some in America, some in Asia, some in like locked up countries that nobody can get to. He can't even mm. say what the name of the country is. Um, all kinds of really cool stuff. And it's just different people's you know, interactions with the zombies. Some people are like survivors from ground zero of these huge yeah. towns. Some people live on the outskirts of towns and never had to deal with more than two zombies at a time. Interesting. So it is what it is. Uh, but that was such a well-written book. Um, obviously sparked the movie, nothing like it. Yeah. I'm still not bitter about that. <laughs> but let's go into a... Uh, Let's do a top five on the books, too. Yeah. Let's do that before I get upset. Okay, okay. So this is from Nerd Much. Uh, Nerd Much, excuse me. Uh, so number five, The Rising by Brian Keene. Uh, I have, dude, I'm looking at this. I haven't read any of these. So if you have any insight to any of this, you're going to have to give it to me because I've never read any of these. So I have only read uh, Slow Burn and World War Z. Okay. So uh, let's just keep going down the list then. Number four, Monster Island by David Wellington. Uh, number three, Slow Burn by Bobby Adair. What is that about? So that one is actually a series, and it it's a zombie series, man. You got it. <laughs> Look, it just, just is what put it, is. it on your list. You read this one. How about that? We'll talk about it when you're done reading it. Sure, fair enough. It is phenomenal. <laughs> All right, noted. Uh, number two, World War Z by Max Brooks, and we talked about that. And then number one, The Reaper are the Angels. Yeah, I think that one's probably going to be the next book I buy. Oh, interesting. I'm, I'm excited about it. That's by Alden Bell. Um, I've actually heard of this before. And are they making a show about this? It's like ringing a bell on my head. Maybe I'm... I don't know. Maybe. If they are, I'm down for it. Hmm. But just like when I was looking at this list, some of this stuff, like I'm realizing I don't know everything about zombies. You got to catch up, man. So I, I need to, yeah. <laughs> You're there's, letting me down right now. There's a few books I got I to gotta <laughs> check out. I'm not a huge reader, though. Like, That's true. Usually, I, I don't... That's okay. what it is. Uh, honorable mention, The Walking Dead comic. Uh, in case you didn't know, the show, the hit TV show, The Walking Dead, is inspired by, and it follows pretty closely to the comic books. Like, at least they follow the same themes and the same, like, general people. Yeah. It's, it's not as different from The Walking Dead, or the World War Z movie. 
no, it, it's definitely a lot better adaptation than that. Um, there are some characters obviously added and taken right. away. Some characters' fates are different. Uh, like Daryl from the show, everybody's favorite character, Daryl, was <laughs> never in the comics at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, it is what it is. It's a little bit different, but it's a fun adaptation of the comics the show was. Uh, the comics, though, sparked yeah. a huge following for the show. Yeah. Right. So it was a really cool Real cool setup to have that one. So that'll be our honorable mention in the book section. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Next up, uh, we, we, we can't forget about this one because this is a big one, is video games. Bro, like that's like the biggest thing with zombies. It, it, it really Movies is. Movies are great, but nothing beats killing a zombie yourself. No, and we have some stake in this because we've played a lot of these games. Oh, so, yeah. so from Call of Duty to Doom to Plants vs. Zombies to Resident Evil, zombie games have become just as big, if not bigger, than the movies. Let's do a top five. Let's talk about each one because I think we might have played all of these. Absolutely, yeah. Um, now, is this different or is this the same way? Uh, no, it's the same way. Okay. Which really like blew my mind that it's I'm, in I'm this you. order. Yeah. Okay, so you want to start first because this is your favorite game of yeah. all time. So my absolute favorite video game of all time. I'm realizing a lot about myself with this zombie <laughs> stuff. Like my favorite movies, my favorite yeah. books, my favorite video games. They're trend. all zombies. <laughs> There's so a common you, denominator. Like you, you have this thing about dads. I have this thing about zombies. <laughs> like that's what it is. Okay, cool. So my all-time favorite video game. I'm really upset that this was only number five on the list. Yeah. Um, this is The Last of Us. Oh, such a beautiful game. It is so well written, yeah. story driven, emotional. Mm. Like in the first five minutes, you're hooked and you're crying. Yep. If you're not crying, you don't have a soul. Yeah, you're you're not human. About halfway through, I cried again, and at the very end, I sat there in silence for like an hour after mm. the game finished while the credits were rolling. Usually, like, I'll try to skip through the credits. I just sat there and stared at the screen. <laughs> if you haven't played this game, you're yeah. wasting your life. It is, it is such a... PlayStation exclusive. Yeah, I had to play it when we lived together on your console. Yeah. Um, it, it has made me think about getting a PlayStation. I'm still an Xbox guy, but... Um, no, I, I remember playing that, and it was, at the time, one of my f most favorite video games of all time, because I like the story-driven stuff. Um, and the, the only game that I've really compared to it to me are like Red Dead 2. And um, I like Assassin's Creed, so I like the whole genre. But Last of Us, just just as a like standalone game, is so yeah. incredible. So. And it does have a sequel, which surprisingly also did not make this list at all. I the sequel yet. was really good. Yeah. Not as good, I don't think, but it had different themes. Yeah. And it was just phenomenal as well. All right, so the next one on the list was the Resident Evil 2 remake. I don't play I haven't played this one. Okay. So Resident Evil 2 I think came out for the PlayStation or PlayStation 2, I don't remember which one. Uh but it was an old school zombie game kind of in the theme of Doom. Yeah. Uh where you're basically just like run, running around. It had some glitches in the controls and it was it was a little sketchy, a little glitchy. Uh, but it was a fun game overall. It had a cool storyline. You know, you're right. trying to fight all these zombies and <laughs> monsters and everything. Uh, the remake fixed all of the problems that mm. gamers had with the first one. That's cool. And since it was such a cool story, gamers decided to give it a shot, mm. and they loved it. Cool. It was a phenomenal redo, and I think that is probably one of the best remakes mm. of all time. Oh, cool. Cool, man. Uh, number three, The Walking Dead Season 1. Again, this is not a game that I've played before. Is it? Is it good? I honestly haven't played it. Oh, um, I've go. seen some good things about it. I know the graphics are pretty cool for it. Mm. Um, it's kind of like, um, did you play the Batman Arkham yeah. games? So it's kind of like that, like the Telltale uh, version, like you're playing comic panels through the game. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, I haven't played it myself. I've just seen some cool stuff about it. Cool beans. Uh, next would be the Resident Evil HD remaster, which is different from the remake. How so? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I didn't play this one, truthfully. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil HD remaster, though, is a high-definition remaster of the original Resident yeah. Evil. And for some reason, it's higher up on the list. Again, I didn't play the remaster, so I don't know. Hmm. Uh, but it follows the same, you know, the Redfield family just fighting off right. zombies. That's It is what it is. There you go. Uh, number one on this list, and my wife's favorite video game. What? Oh, I knew that. Yeah. Huh. We used to play this game together yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one is Left 4 Dead 2. 
takes place in Louisiana. Yep. You play one out of four characters, and all four characters, whether you're playing them or a computer's playing them, have to work together to survive these areas, get from one safe room to another. Right. That's your save point. So anytime you're in a safe room, it saves, you're good, you move on to the next stage, and you have to beat these levels by surviving different types of zombies. That's pretty cool. Obviously, you've got the standard zombie, but then there are like specialized types, Come like on. the hunter, the witch, the yes. bloater, the tank, um, all kinds of really cool <laughs> Uh, smokers, all kinds of really cool uh, deviant types, I guess. Right. Um, but you survive by picking up weapons throughout the game. You can get like an axe, a frying pan, <laughs> um, different types of guns, machine guns, handguns, uh, grenades, all kinds of cool stuff, pipe bombs. Uh, you use adrenaline and painkillers to fix your health. Super fun game. I would definitely suggest playing it unless you are scared of death. Oh. In which case... I mean, isn't kind of all these? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> in which case, you probably tuned out in the first five seconds. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but <laughs> the only one I have problems with on that game, the only level I can't stand is Hard Rain. Mm. It is truly terrifying. Mm. Uh, there's like three different witches on that level, and it, it scares <laughs> me still. Like to this day, I'm a grown man. It scares me. <laughs> um, oh, good stuff. Yeah. And then honorable mention for video games as well, House of the Dead. That's the, the staple in every arcade. Classic. You walk in, you pick up the little gun, you put in your quarter, and you just go to town pew shooting pew. up zombies. I think there's like seven of them now. Yeah, I'm sure. But it's such a great game. And then Call of Duty Zombies. Yeah. I think most Call of Duties, if not all of the modern ones, have a zombie level. I haven't played Call of Duty in forever. Bro. That's all right. I, I haven't either. <laughs> I, only play, I literally only play zombies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can kill zombies, most of which are like Nazi zombies. It, it's a fun way to... Just have some, have some fun. Right. They right. come at you in waves, and you survive as long as you can. Now, okay, so this is a little bit different, but um, have you you've played Star Wars Battlefront? Yeah. Or Star Wars Battlefront 2, like the, the modern one? Yes. So it's not zombies, but it gives me the same vibes, and it's Ewok Hunt. Have you ever played that? No. You need to come over and play it with me. So what happens is the, you, you have, like, up to, I think, 18 stormtroopers. So this is after the Battle of Endor, and everyone's left, but they somehow left behind, like, 18 stormtroopers. And they have to survive the night with Ewoks hunting. So it starts with two Ewoks. The catch is, is that you only have a flashlight, and so you can only see where the flashlight's pointed as a stormtrooper. <laughs> and, you know, you have a gun. You have a, you, 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 you have that, but that's, that's all you have for you, unless you go and find, like, this random little package where it's a little bit better gun and you have a flamethrower. Or, um, a grenade, but the Ewoks they can see clearly in the night, and they have these little, of course, the little spears and everything. So the whole point is to, if you're playing as the Ewok, to kill everyone else. And so once you are killed as a stormtrooper, you become an Ewok. And so over the time of the oh, game, yeah. like it's like zombies, but Star Wars. Yes, and it's amazing. And I think that's probably like the <laughs> the biggest like fear for people with zombies, though, is like obviously zombies are slower, they're dumber, they're, yeah, they're not up there. But they don't have to stop to sleep. They don't have to. Oh, yeah, they don't yeah. have to eat. I mean, they want to eat you, but yeah. they don't have to like stop to eat. They don't have to plan. They just come at you in waves, yep. and they are an unstoppable force. And all you can do is survive. That's all you can do. <laughs> oh, Anyways, man, so that's that's, that was my honorable mention. All right, so let's talk about this real quick, and this won't take that much long. Uh, that much time, excuse me. But zombies in the Bible. They're there. They're in the Bible. Give me the first one, man, because because people don't believe us, but uh, you you've had this in your in your in your your knowledge for a long yeah, time. Yeah. So when I was in Bible college, actually, this was the very first verse I memorized for, or the first one I used for scripture test. Nice. Actually, to be honest with you, <laughs> um, but it was Isaiah twenty six nineteen. Your dead shall live; their bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake and shout for joy. Your dew is as the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead and conceal her slain no longer. It sounds like a zombie to me. It's all, definitely for, a zombie. For all you guys questioning and rolling your eyes, that sounds like a zombie to me. That's all I'm saying. Look, they're dead and then they come back. That's a zombie. Yep. They're walking around the earth. They're doing whatever they do. And a lot of people like have problems with that because they're like, oh, no, that's not what it's talking about. I know that's not what it's talking about. <laughs> but isn't it though? Could you just be cool? Just, <laughs> <laughs> just be cool for once, just right? Just be cool. Okay, here's the next one. Is Zechariah uh, uh, 14. Uh, uh, the Lord will bring a terrible disease on all the nations that make war on Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot away while they are still alive. Their eyes and their tongues will rot away. Okay, obviously they're probably still alive, but I think it could it could it could be a play on it. I think because I mean, like if you're in ancient days and you see an 
random dude. You don't know that they're dead. Yeah, they they didn't have George A. Romero movies to right. reference. They didn't know, oh, yeah, that's a zombie. As Zombies far, weren't around as a thing until the 16th, uh, 1600s. Right, so as far as you know, that's that's just a you know uh, an, an, an alive person that's coming at you with, an, yeah. With leprosy or with, whatever. Right. <laughs> so the verse after that is the one that gets me, though, 13. On that day, people will be stricken by the Lord with great panic. They will seize each other by the hand and attack one another. Come on, guys. It's Tell it. me that's not a zombie apocalypse. That's it. That's it. 101. There you go. Yeah. Now, uh, there is a pastor that I follow on TikTok from a church in Canada, uh, Jeff of the Chosen Family Church. Okay. Um, I asked him about this specifically because he does study the Bible in its original Hebrew. You just know this dude randomly? I met him on TikTok. Oh, cool. Um, and he said that that is definitely not what he's talking about. <laughs> It's talking about the day of the Lord. Why, and the why day do you of bring judgment. that up, man? <laughs> because I want people to know that I don't think everything is a joke. <laughs> but isn't it though? But isn't it? <laughs> oh man! Uh, all right, let's wrap this thing up, man. Yeah. Um, so from the history of zombies, like in the 1600s, all the way to like the big boom we had like five to ten years ago, to now where zombies are just pretty much like an afterthought. Like yeah. what happened? Yeah, this generation doesn't even care about them anymore. Like other than maybe Call of Duty, but it's like. I feel like if you told Gen Z that zombies were coming, they'd be like, lit. (laughs) And then open the window. (laughs) And then do that weird, like... They would try to feed them or something. They'd try to, like, feed them pets or something. (laughs) Oh, man. Oh, that was good stuff. (laughs) So, while the craze has moved on, the danger is still very real. Oh, please. It could happen. Yeah. There's the Solanum virus, the cordyceps... Yes. Um, the, the cordyceps is a fungus that was actually the basis for The Last of Us. Right. Um, it, it It's a real thing. Like, there are different <laughs> things that are absolutely real that all it takes is a tiny mutation, and yep. they could definitely spark a zombie apocalypse in the real world. Okay, so I'm going to just take a quick second to talk about this one, because I remember watching this in a documentary a few years ago. So this is real. Like, what Chris is saying, they are real. Like zombie things, things that are dead theoretically, but have been taken over by a virus, they are real. So, this is just one example, but there's other like different insects and stuff like cockroaches, pill bugs, uh, crabs actually. But the, the one I'm gonna talk about is ants. So, zombie discoveries are happening all the time. Just this year, science uh, scientists discovered four new types of body snatching fungi that prey on carpenter ants. The fungus infects the ants and then begins to use chemical signals to direct the ant on a very strange path. The zombified ant then leaves its colony and takes a jaw grip on the underside of a leaf where it stays. When it eventually dies, as the fungus spreads around its ant's body, the fungus produces a stalk from the dead zombie's head and shoots spores out, trying to lure other ants to join the party. It's real. Like, maybe not with humans yet, but it's real. But isn't it, though? It's real. All I'm saying is just give it a few few more hundred years and it could happen. Maybe not. With the way the the planet's changing, just trying to get rid of humans. That's true. Some like, villain that out there, might be the next jump. I'm, some villain might be out there trying to figure this out. Like they, I like get this fungus and trying to rearrange it for humans. You never my, know. My worry is that it wouldn't be a villain. It's just somebody that's like, yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. Just somebody that's bored. Yeah, like these guys that are trying to recreate dinosaurs again. Like, come yeah. on, guys. We have a whole series about why this, this is there a are like six idea. different movies about come why on. you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, man. That's all we got. We got, we got to stop. We got to stop. <laughs> I think we're just going to go ahead and head off to break for this one. We'll be right back with the most important stuff that you guys are listening for uh, with all of our different ending segments. I think this has been a fun podcast so it's far, been so though. Good. What about you? So fun. <laughs> I'm loving it. All right, guys. We'll be right back. We're back. Yay. Hey, hey, hey. All right, guys. So before we move on, don't forget, please, guys, we love you and we love hearing from you. So don't forget to subscribe, to rate, to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to uh, listening to us. Uh, we, we like to know what you like about us or I guess don't. Actually, if you don't like us, please don't say anything. I mean, still like subscribe and <laughs> please subscribe, follow but... us at least <laughs> yeah. so you can constantly be upset by us. But yeah, I will cry. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so make sure you let us know. Make sure you comment about what you guys want to hear. Uh, respond to our little uh, things that we put out every once in a while. We're asking like, hey, what do you guys want to know? Because like, we'll talk about anything. Literally anything. We will like we we have a lot of things that we want to talk about, but we are more than game to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I am not qualified, but I will one hundred percent talk about <laughs> medical facts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I mean, if someone asks about makeup, I mean, I'll do some research. I mean, 
I'll put on makeup. <laughs> we'll figure it out, man. We'll figure it out. It doesn't even matter. All right. Jumping into our next section, Ask Chris and Tim. So this is a part of the show where you guys ask us questions and we answer them yep. as truthfully as we can. It's so like. easy. All right. So first question comes from Lanaya. Yes. She asks, in your opinion, what qualifies a movie to be the best? Is it the lines, automations, cuts, actors, etc.? Yeah, so she had asked this right after, um, or right before we recorded, and I didn't see it. So, Lanaya, I apologize for the two weeks ago. Uh, you asked this about movies and everything, but we had recorded, and I didn't see it until afterwards, so I apologize. Uh, but it's a good question. Um, for me, I... I I don't know. Like again, in the in the movie uh, episode we talked about two weeks ago, we talked about you know what is the best versus what is our favorites. And right. for what you're asking for is the best. I think it has to do with number one the 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 in, the initial creativity is what is new about it. What is something that is unique about it, so much different from everything else. You know, I, I want the story to be. Uh, engaging. I want it to be um, thoughtful. I want it to be emotional and connect. Obviously, like most movies are supposed to be like, but I, I fundamentally, I need it to be unique. I need there to be something different about it. One of them, I, I think I might have mentioned it in the episode, was about the movie Parasite, or Parasites, Parasite, uh, the Korean film. Yes, uh, Parasite. That movie was so good, and I loved it, not just because of the social themes behind it, but because of just how unique and special that movie was and yeah. how it was made and created. And so, Lanai, to me, it, it's, it's a combination of things, but ultimately, I want to see something that's new and unique. And for me, I think, like you just said, it is a combination. I think a, the best movie has to have all of that. Yeah. It doesn't have to have, like, top build actors, but it has to have actors that are really, really good at what they're it's doing. true. Believable. Yeah. Um, the best movie for me will have great use of cinematography, great use of historical film knowledge, yeah. great use of details. Yeah. Exactly. It's got to it's got to bring me into a world that I do not currently live in right. and make me forget that I'm watching a movie. Yep. That's what qualifies the best movie for me. You know, and that's and I'll, we'll say one more thing about this. That's why I also really love Quentin Tarantino films is because even though you kind of expect a certain level of violence and craziness with his films, each one is a little bit different and it provides just a little bit different historical context to it and, uh, you know, re-envisioned about what a historic moment could be. Yeah. And so uh, his films always, I've always loved his stuff. So it's anyways. good stuff. Um, all right. Next one. Our friend Aaron asked, who would win if they had a small katana? Chris or Tim? Me, obviously. I'm going to give this one to you. I'm going to say I agree You're with gonna you. You're going to give it to me? Yes. I would take it from you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm saying like you would win. I'm, I'm saying that, yes, you're correct. You would win. However, I will say, if it came down to a gun, I think I would win. I have, I know, I know. But here's the thing. Of all these like men's retreats that I've been at and all the times that we've gone out shooting, I'm usually one of the last two that's like in the competition. Like I, I got a pretty good aim. I, I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm not saying that, you know, I look, don't look at me that way, okay? Look, okay? Don't look at me like I'm just some weakling or something. I can put up a good fight with a gun. That's all I'm saying. A good fight, sure. I would absolutely oh my demolish gosh. you. Though. Chris, I could, okay, look, it takes one shot with a gun to, Tim, you know. We live in Texas. We can go to a shooting range literally anytime. <laughs> Let's go. Then. You say when, I'll be there. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is I'm not bad at shooting a gun. I'm pretty dang good. Video games have taught me how to aim really well, and I'm good at it, okay? I haven't seen you shoot. I'm just saying, like, I, I would put up a really good fight, and I could probably win that one. You would definitely win with the sword. I'll give you 100% all right, that. All right. We'll see. <laughs> we'll let you guys know what happens after we go to right. the range next time. <laughs> all right. Last question comes from Harley. I like Harley's questions. Yes. If you could own a business or charity, what would it be about? Ooh, hmm. that's a good one. That's a good one. I should have looked at these questions before. Should I go first? Because yeah, I have a thought. Please, please. I think if, if, if I were tomorrow to start a charity or a nonprofit, um, I'm, I'm still really close and I feel close to the, the people who feel like they're in the religious outcast. Yes. The people who have been brought up in church or maybe not, but feel like they want to be somehow religiously connected, whether that's, you know, the Christian God or whatever. But I want to be able to create a space, uh, create a opportunity, and that's kind of what this podcast is about, anyways. But um, is to create a place where you're not one, not judged, but two, you can be accepted no matter what, and three, be loved no matter what. You know, I, yeah. I think, I think, I don't know what that would look like. I don't know what that business strategy would be about, but 
Um, th- that's kind of where my heart kind of tends to is the people who have been hurt from religious trauma, both church or just people or whatever. And so that's probably me. I think I'd probably be in the same vein, uh, not specifically due to religious trauma, but just teens and kids that are hurting, like their families aren't supporting of whatever mm-hmm. they're, they're abusive, any type of stuff like that. Like kids that need parents, mm. like I will be your dad. Yeah. My yeah. wife will be your mom. You need a hot meal. You come find us. You want to talk, you come find us. And I would make sure that the people that are working in this charity are qualified to help. Come on. That they are genuine with their intentions like there's nothing weird going on they're not like saying crazy stuff to these kids yeah and they would absolutely feel the love that they're not getting at home Mm. whether it's due to religious trauma or any other kind of trauma doesn't matter to me i just want kids and teens to know that there are people out there that love them and support them that's 100 percent what i would do i don't know how i would do it but i'd find a way yeah, that's really good, man. Wow, look at us getting, I mean, Harley, the deep question you gave us there. Come on, Harley. <laughs> that's really good. Thank Harley, you. If you ever have a question, I will answer it anytime. That's true. Yeah, yeah we love him. So, guys, uh, again, if you want to hear your questions on the pod, make sure to send your questions on social media or email at alwaysmorepod at gmail.com or just respond to our questions that we post on social media and stuff. And so we'd love to answer your questions on the pod. Yeah. <laughs> all right, next up, we have a very one of my favorite segments of all time, and that is Shower Thoughts with Chris. If a poison expires or goes bad, is it more poisonous or less poisonous? I don't know. Do you know? I don't. So this is just a genuine, like, it, you didn't it, do any research. You no, just... <laughs> zero research. Hot take. All right, guys, if you know the answer to this, please let us know. <laughs> Send it in. <laughs> it's actually really good knowledge to know, just in case. <laughs> I mean, I would think, like, it depends on the poison, maybe? Well, there's a difference between uh, venom and poison, right? There's Yeah, so like venom, I think, would lose its potency. Yes. But like poison, like arsenic or cyanide, it just depends. Guys, we don't know what we're talking about, so please don't drink anything. <laughs> yeah, don't, like, when we say research, I mean like internet research, right. not, not like firsthand. Please don't do that. Yeah. Be safe. Be smart. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good thing to look up. <laughs> Maybe I'll look into this later. And you know, I won't. Message me if you want me to know. <laughs> I'm not looking into it. Oh, good stuff. All right. After that, we're going to go straight into Tim's next segment. He's not usually this guy, but we're going to hear Tim's well, actually. Contrary to popular belief, there has been no proven correlation between sugar and hyperactivity in children. Additionally, the typical eight glasses of water a day are not needed to maintain health. The amount of water needed varies by person, weight, uh, activity level, clothing, and even environment. Um, Yeah. So I definitely believe the water thing. It varies. Yeah. As a parent (laughs) who has given my child sugar, I completely disagree with that other part. I think 100% you give a kid sugar, they are going to be more hyperactive. Well... See, and maybe that's just the definition we look at here because obviously they're going to receive more energy. That's what sugar is. It's energy for your body. But, it, I mean, it's, there, there's there's a difference between assuming like, oh, there's going to be more energetic versus, oh, they're uncontrollable. Because I think I think there is a difference there. I guess. <laughs> but look, I'm just telling you what the science says. That's all I'm saying. Or I'm telling you what the internet says, what the science says. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Final thoughts on zombies. What do you got for me, Tim? Uh, zombies are fun to talk about. I mean, hypothetically, I don't think we'll see any kind of real thing unless, I mean, and, and genuinely unless someone decides to be a villain and create something, which, I mean, that's not, I guess, that far of a stretch, but. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I know recently scientists found, like, this giant virus. Um, they were, like, digging in the polar ice caps, and they found this giant virus. And Why are these guys digging in stuff? That's what, what I'm saying. Like, you don't know what they're going to find. We <laughs> never know. It could be a complete accident. It's but true. something could happen. It could mutate. It could catch one of us off guard. Yeah. Zombies could happen in a way that nobody saw coming. It's true. Like, and, and, you know, it's, it's funny because we joke about this, but at the same time, like I mentioned earlier, they take over animals. They take over insects. It is a real thing. It, it's not fiction. Cordyceps. It is a real thing. So, theoretically, could something pop up out of nowhere and do it on humans? I mean... Dude, 
COVID came from bats. Um, <laughs> Mad cow came from cows. Rabies came from crazy animals like, uh, what was it, raccoons and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Like all of these different diseases can jump species. If Just cordyceps don't. were to do it, I know it's a fungus, but if it were to jump species to humans, there's nothing we could do to stop it. It's true. True. There you go. It's crazy. Final fun thoughts. That's that's all we have for today. Chris, dude, let's wrap this thing up. You do it, man. All right. Well, if you guys want to know anything more about zombies, feel free to message me personally on my own Facebook. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, I'll, I'll talk about zombies all day long. Um, ask, come on, guys. Connect with us. Ask us questions. Send us messages. Do uh, it. Like, rate, comment, subscribe, all of that stuff. All We'd love to hear from you. Follow us on Apple Podcast, Overcast, Spotify. I think we even post to YouTube. Yeah, all that crazy stuff. Like any any platform you want. We try to we try to reach out to you. We try to make it easy for you. We did this for you. We did this for you. I don't know why you're yelling at me, <laughs> but we did this for you guys. Come on, connect with us. That's all we want. Yes. Um, other than that, guys, we hope you have a wonderful week. Phenomenal time. Whatever you're doing this year, this week, this month, tomorrow, today, do it with oomph. Do it with oomph. I like that. Oomph. I just wanted to use that word once in the podcast. <laughs> all right, guys. That's all we have for y'all today. We love y'all. We will see you guys next time. Bye. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Always More podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to subscribe, share, like, and rate on whatever your platform of preference is. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Always More Pod and ask your question using hashtag Ask Chris and Tim. If you'd like to support the podcast and feed into Chris and Tim's caffeine addiction, you can do so at buymeacoffee.com slash alwaysmorepod. For further information and to contact Chris or Tim, you can email them at alwaysmorepodcast at gmail.com.